Well, happy Saturday. How you doing? Uh, it's been a long time since I've gone live, but um, I thought I would just hop on and chat with you for a little bit um, about calories because I think there's a lot of confusion with people, particularly um, in the fitness community, about calories and are calories created equal? Is it just calories in, calories out? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Chef Maria. Uh, I go by the Fit Foodie. I've been the Fit Foodie for about 14 years. Um, and uh, I am a holistic nutritionist. I'm a trained chef, and I'm in the process of getting my brain health coach certification through Amen University, Dr. Daniel Amen. So I'm really excited about that. I'm learning a whole lot. I'm sharing as I go um, because I think that's the best way to teach is to share what you learn. Um, and I am a 55-year-old woman. Uh, I'm a mom of two, stepmom to three, so five kids. And I'm married. I live in Southern California. And I've been around the food world for about 30 years. So I'm not new to it, but uh, I, I definitely think that I have an opinion <laughs> might not be the same opinion as what other people think, um, but I, I believe that it's important to share what you know. So hopefully you'll hear me out. And if you have any questions, that's why I'm going live. If you have any questions about nutrition, about cooking, um, about Egyptian food, which I just posted about, go and take a look at that when we're done and, and let's have this be an interactive chat for the next 10 minutes. So um, let's talk about calories because Okay, let's just break down what a calorie is. So a calorie is basically a unit of heat, right? A, a measurement that tells us what a certain food, how much energy it takes to burn that food off, basically. So say, for example, you're eating um, something like a, a, a chicken breast, okay? A four-ounce chicken breast, roughly, I mean, it's somewhere around... 250 calories or so. So it takes 250 calories of heat energy to burn that, that chicken breast off. Now, what is the chicken breast made of? It's got incredible protein, you know, about 25 grams of protein to 30 grams of protein, roughly. Um, it's got nutrients uh, that are going to feed your body. It's going to help to build muscle. Um, it's got uh, tryptophan, which is a hormone that our body uses to relax. Um, it helps our brain. It, so many benefits, okay? And if you're not a meat eater, that's okay. You can kind of just follow along with me. So I'm talking about like a specific macronutrient and its nutrient profile. So say, for example, you were to look at a, I don't know, a Snickers bar. Okay, a Snickers bar is made out of, it's got primarily sugar, it's got chocolate in it, it's got peanuts, so, you know, maybe the peanuts have some benefit. But the point is, it's primarily like sugar, so, and it's a simple sugar that your body just kind of burns through. It can raise your glycemic index. It can, you know, if you eat enough of them, cause prediabetes. I mean, okay, again, you, you might take a little bit from the peanuts, but other than that, there's not a whole lot that it's giving to you, right? So when people say, I'm just going to burn off the five Snicker bars that I ate and the pizza and the cookies, I'll just work a little harder in the gym. Here's what they're missing, okay? What they're missing is, yes, there are calories, and there is a certain certain expenditure that you're gonna put out to burn something. But once you eat it, it's registered as information in your body. So the chicken breast is gonna turn into protein. It's gonna turn into the building blocks, the amino acids, the building blocks of muscle. So it's got an end game, right? The Snickers bar is just going to create inflammation and it's going to raise your blood sugar. And again, if you eat enough of them, it can cause a hypoglycemic prediabetes state. So to think that it's just calories in that you burn is a huge misnomer. And I was at the gym today 
And I heard these two guys, I was like, I oh, want the gym. Uh, I don't work for Gold's, by the way. I just happen to be a Gold's gym member and wearing their shirt. So, um, but I'm working out today and I hear these two guys talk about their evening last night and how they had eaten like a whole pizza and they had a bunch of cookies. And the guy was just like, just, you know, an extra hour on the treadmill. And I, sometimes I have to really resist myself. Like I can't. I can't be the preacher about nutrition to everybody. You know, it's not my place to do that. But I had to make a mental note because I had to share that with you in case you know these guys or maybe it's even something that you've thought about. It's never just about a calorie. It's about what the food has to offer. It's like, what does it bring to the table, right? It's like you have friends in your life and you love them, but some of your friends... They're fun to be around, but they don't actually like, maybe you've known them for a while. Maybe you just love them for who they are, but it's not like you're necessarily like, or let's just say a family member, you know, that you're learning a lot from, or that you, you know, you have these in-depth conversations. They're fun to be around. Okay. They're fun. But then you have these friends that you get into these super deep conversations with and, you know, you learn from them and you experience life with them. And it's just like every interaction just feels good. And that's like nutrient dense friends, right? Those are the friends that you're just like, I want to be around these people. Like they bring me joy. They hype me up. They bring me energy. Like I vibe with them. Like I feed from them. That's the difference between the chicken breast and the Snickers bar. So it's never just about a calorie. It's never about like, I'm just going to burn it off. Like, I am in the process of trying to actually bulk right now, okay? I am desperately trying to put on weight. And I have to eat in order to do that. It's not just enough that I go to the gym, right? Because I am trying to build muscle. I'm trying to put on lean muscle mass. So if I were to just be like, well, I'll just eat like a bunch of pizza and I'll just have as much sugar as I want because I need to gain weight, like that's not going to produce muscle. It's going to produce fat and not the kind of good fat that you're, that feeds your brain. Right? So it's very much about the quality of the food and what it's bringing to the table. And I think sometimes we just need a reminder, like a lot of gym professionals, trainers out there, and some do, but some don't teach their clients this. So it's really a, a big thing. Uh, I think in the fitness community where people just like, they see it says protein on it, so they buy it. Well, just because it says protein doesn't mean that it's good for you. You got to read the cat, yeah, the ingredient deck. You got to see if there's artificial ingredients and sweeteners and preservatives. And, you know, is there like so much caffeine, it's going to create a cortisol storm in your body, you know? So does this, I hope this is like registering and making sense and, and bringing some value. And, um, and so I think on the, the wellness side of, of this fitness, um, pursuit, we have to just remember that it's not just about the calories. You've got to make the calories count. The, the calories have to count towards something that it's building in your body that matters. So our primary macronutrient that we need to think about is protein, um, Protein is made of amino acids, essential, they're called essential amino acids, EAAs, and these seat branch chain amino acids, though, those are the building blocks of muscle. They're the building blocks of humanity. Uh, our bodies require them and, and our bodies don't produce them on their own. So we need them from food. Absolutely essential. And if you're protein deprived, it can affect your brain health. It can affect your um, muscle, you know, you can start to catabolize uh, your, the muscle in your body because your, your body needs protein. So it'll start to break down the muscle that you have. And that's why you see people sometimes walking around looking very frail. Um, it's because they're maybe not getting enough protein. Um, so the body is just kind of breaking down the muscle that it has. Um, and we need fat. We need essential fatty acids. And again, they're called essential because our body requires them and our body doesn't produce them. So we need those for brain function, heart function, and just to run the, the ship, you know, fly the plane that is our body. Um, and then carbohydrates, we need fiber. 
I'm going to say we need fiber more than anything. We need fiber to grow um, good gut bacteria. So you have the fiber and then the probiotics do what they're supposed to do. So those are the three big buckets and in order of priority, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. But it's really about the fiber um, more than anything. So, you know, if you're looking for guidance on what you should be eating um, and you need maybe a little bit of uh, help in terms of like boosting your brain health, your gut health, your mood. Um, I have a free seven day challenge that I'm doing right now. You can grab the link in my profile. It's the seven day reboot your brain. And you might be thinking, well, what does that have to do with food and calories? Well, it has everything to do with it because what you eat becomes you, you know? You are what you eat, as cliche as that sounds, you are what you eat. So if you're eating fast, cheap, and junk, that's kind of what you're putting out there to the world, you know what I mean? So I want more for you. I want you to feel like you can crush your goals and you can you know, do all the things that God created you to do and you gotta feed your body, you gotta feed this Ferrari well. Um, so when you do that, yeah, garbage, thank you, Doina, garbage in, garbage out. So we want to produce good fuel. We want to burn clean. And when we burn clean, we balance this and this too, because guys, it doesn't matter how fit you get. And I want you to really lean in on this. I have met people who have the most beautiful physiques. I mean, ripped eight pack, beautiful rear shoulders, you name it. But when you don't have balance in your life, you don't feel psychologically well, you don't have community, we are bankrupt. I mean, we don't have an asset if we don't have balance. So you can tweet that by the way, or hashtag it, you don't have an asset if you are bankrupt in your life, you know? I mean, that, and that's just it. We've gotta be healthy body, mind, and soul. And relationally, um, you know, that's the other thing is community is so incredibly important. Having people around you that lift you up. You know, we are in a mental health crisis. One in four people globally have some sort of brain or mental disorder, whether that be depression, anxiety, stress, um, and some sort of you know actual brain trauma, a concussion, some sort of head injury, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's. Um, I would say even diabetes and stroke. These are all related to your brain. Stroke, people think it's a heart condition. It's actually a brain condition um, because it's, a, it's the blood vessels in the brain. So it can be induced by high blood pressure, but ultimately it's a brain disorder. So all I'm saying is our lifestyle matters. Um, how we love matters. You know, we're in February. It's the month of heart health and love. Like we... We get in better health when we forgive others, when we're um, happy in our spirit and we have joy that you can't, now I'm preaching, I'm going off script, okay? It's Sunday sermon, I'm rolling into it. But we are happy in our soul and fulfilled when we have an attachment to a higher power. That's what, that's what fuels us. That's what we plug into. Without that, we have no power source. So if you're leaning on yourself, if you just are like, I got this, I don't need people around me, I can take care of myself, like, friend, you need something. You need someone, right? Somebody's given me a big thumbs up. I think that's, that's awesome. That was like the hand of God right there. Um, but you need that. You need that. And we are so much healthier when we're communal. You know, one of the big stressors of the pandemic was isolation. When people couldn't go out and couldn't be together and, and couldn't 
actually see each other and interact and hold one another. You know, when, when children are born into orphanages and they're not held regularly, they die. We need to be held. We need to be touched. We need to be loved. And, you know, so many people want to do this on their own, but we need one another. And even if it's just joining a community like this, you know, plugging into a, a church group, you know, maybe it's people that you work out with. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, your neighbor, like your kids, whoever, your significant other should be your best friend. You know, like we, we get to be in community and that's the way we heal. We heal when we can love on each other. So this derision that we see online, you know, this hate, um, the cowardice of people hiding behind uh, a profile and shaming others and um, calling them names and, you know, insulting them. It's cowardice. When we truly can be understanding that we're all one, we're all one no matter where we come from, no matter what our skin color is, what our gender is, what our nationality is. We don't know what it feels like to walk in someone else's shoes. We don't know their burdens. We don't know what they were born with. I just had uh, coffee this morning with a friend of mine who I'm really just getting to know like well, and I had no idea that she had cancer when she was a teenager. So like, these are the things that, how do you know unless you can sit down with somebody and talk to them and just know their heart? Hi, Kelly. So good to see you, honey. Um, how do you know their heart if you if you don't know what they've walked in? I mean, we we have a, a, a profile here where we have a front on social media and you might think you know somebody, but you don't know. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've walked through, you know? Um, and so I think that when we take good care of our health, we not only promote balance and and our own personal lives but we promote mental health we show that to others and when we model it we can inspire other people to also feel that way um you know i had one of the best days that i can remember yesterday just spending a day with my friend we went and worked out and we had lunch together she took me out for lunch um, as a belated birthday present And it was just such great quality time. And it was like, man, sometimes we just need to go, you know what, I need a mental health day. I need to be able to just like put down work, put down, you know, like whatever I perceive as like the that big hairy ass goal of mine that I'm just killing myself for and just be. We're human beings at the end of the day. We're not just human doings. It's not by what we do, but by who we are and the quality of our um, of our integrity and who we are as people, how we show up in the world. So I am really, really like way, way off what the subject was, but um, forgive me for that. I hope this was helpful. I hope that this maybe spoke to somebody's heart that it's not just how you look, but it's who you are and who who you are here and who he says you are. So um, let me know, let me know. I'm gonna post this, I'll share it. Just drop me a comment and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm really looking to rebuild my community. Um, my life was built around Eat Cleaner for the past 13 years building my product line. And I sold my company last year and I'm, I'm like, reinventing myself like Madonna right now you know it's like it's exciting but scary like and I'm so intrigued by this brain body mental health soul health connection so that's what I'm pursuing with every ounce of my being and I'm saying it out loud proclaiming it so that it is heard um and I want to help as many people as possible because I've been through many, many, many things in my life, being a single mom for 13 years, being married to an alcoholic, um, going through my own personal trauma with um, food addictions and abuse. And, you know, now in my 50s, just kind of like figuring it all out and being able to share that. And I, I do believe it's never too early and it's never too late. So 
I hope you'll stick with me on this journey. Um, real ones wanted. Uh, like I said in a post a, a few days ago, real ones wanted. So I'm going to go through. i got to put my glasses on and see. I'm not going to add anybody to this live right now just because... I'm going to just make this about you guys. But Kelly, thanks so much for jumping into the challenge. Thanks so much for putting it on. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. You're a real one, girl. Um, Doina, I love you and everything you always have to say. Thank you, Doina. I love you too. Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Oh, my goodness. How are you, my friend? Gosh, it's been so long. My goodness. Um, wow. So cool. I love it. My daughter is on. Hi, baby. Sophia. So many people, thank you for being on. Thank you for sharing in this moment. Um, and you know, let's let's redefine what it looks like to be healthy in 2024. Let's not make it all about just like superficial stuff. I wanna go deep. I wanna like, I wanna make people uncomfortable. I spoke at my church last week. I'm going to leave you with this. I spoke at my church last week um, and I talked about how we have to have the guts to help our own brains, to help the people around us, to help the people in our lives that when we know better, we have to do better and we have to like share that because we can't just watch the train wreck that is the health um, of our country. You know, I'm talking about personal health. We can't excuse just all of the junk that's in our food system right now as being just acceptable. You know, we can't sit back and allow our food to get polluted, our water to get polluted, our um, crops to be genetically modified without any labeling. Like this is killing our society. It's because it's killing our brains and our guts. It's not just about like, Oh, well, you know, yeah, don't eat the cereal. Well, it's become epidemic now. 75% of the population, almost 80, is overweight. Overweight is not just a, a like, I, I love my body. I'm happy at any weight. No, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about prediabetes. I'm talking about hypertension and heart disease and trauma and all of the things that this brings on. Like... We have to just be strong enough to say it's not okay for our kids to be fed what they're fed in schools and, and care about it. Um, so that's a discussion for another day, but I'll leave you with that. That's a lot to think about and a lot to process. So jump into the seven day brain health challenge. I'm going to be feeding you a lot of little tidbits, um, some great little clips of um, you know, food for thought for, for you to, uh, keep in mind recipes, um, guidance on macronutrients, um, just some spiritual and, and, uh, physiological or, uh, psychological practices that I'm learning from the Amen University. Um, and that should all be super helpful to your journey. All right. Happy Saturday. Make it a good one. We're blessed beyond measure, even in our trials there is a blessing to be seen, even if you don't see it right now. All right. Love you.